Good morning YouTube, how are you doing today? My name is Anthony, this is Palmetto Prepared and today we're back in my kitchen and I'm going to make some homemade bread. Now we made banana bread last time, this time we're going to make normal bread but we're going to put in a Dutch oven because in my opinion Dutch ovens, uh, they make a better crust and because it holds in that humidity, it just, it really makes a good bread. And I wasn't going to film this, it was just kind of one of those things where I usually going to make it and uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to film it just in case some of my viewers out there actually want to learn how to make their own homemade bread. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And the first thing you need to do is you need to get six cups of all-purpose flour. Some people use bread flour. I use all-purpose flour for this. It makes a little bit of a chewier dough. And just put it in a bowl. Six cups. And when I say six cups, I mean take your scooper out and level it off. Don't do like a heaping cup. This is kind of one of those things where it's actually kind of important that, to do that way. And uh, next thing you do, we got to get our yeast ready. So I'll take you over there. Okay, so now for your yeast, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take two and a quarter cups of water and just a quick pack of the yeast. And all you need to do is make sure that the first thing you want to make sure is it's not expired. And a lot of your grocery stores, unfortunately, these days are going to have expired yeast because a lot of people don't make their own bread anymore, or usually yeast. So they don't rotate like they're supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and open it and put it in there. Now we're going to go ahead and mix it. Now one thing I wanted to make sure I uh, told you is you want to make sure this water is warm. When I say warm, I mean like bathtub water. Put your finger in it. If it feels like you're about ready to take a bath, then you're good. And you're going to want to put this aside for about 5-10 minutes until it starts frothing. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when you do it. So just stick this thing over to the side and we're going to get our dry ingredients ready, okay? So I've got my flour ready here. I've already put two tablespoons, not teaspoons, but tablespoons of uh, salt in there. We're going to put our sugar in now. Three tablespoons of sugar. And me, I've just preferred to, you know, you don't have to do it with this. I just like doing it because I've been doing it for, I don't know, however many years now. And I just think it tastes a little better with some olive oil in it. So we're going to go ahead and get a tablespoon of olive oil. All right. Now, we take our yeast. I don't know if you can tell, Let's see if I can get it up here to the camera, where it's already starting to get a little bubbly and frothy. Ah, you can't tell, whatever. And we're gonna go ahead and mix it in a little bit at a time. And uh, I hope you got some clean hands, because this is where the, the hands thing's gonna really come into play. Okay. Now. And pour the rest. Okay, so now you're going to take your dough and you're going to put it onto a floured surface and you're going to start kneading it. And when I say kneading it, it just basically means playing with it. So if you like playing with dough or playing with Play-Doh or doing any kind of weird stuff, like with that slime, then this is perfect for you because this is basically all you're doing. So you're going to take your dough and you're going to stretch it and put it back together. Now you're going to do this for about a good 8 to 10 minutes. And when you're done, I'll show you what it looks like, but it looks like a nice little round ball. And you're going to stick it into a, a grease container. I'll show you all that part, but for the most part, you're just going to keep stretching it for about 8 to 10 minutes until it gets to nice uh, elasticity, okay? Alright, now that we got our dough formed, put it into a ball. We're going to put it into a greased bowl to rise, okay? And when I do this, I usually cover with the towel and toss it in an in a oven that's not on. Because it just kind of keeps it, you know, out of the way and all kinds of fun stuff. So, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, dough's in the oven. It's rising. You want to let it go about an hour and a half, two hours until it doubles in size. When it doubles in size, it'll be good to go. Now, uh, you get to start cleaning up all your mess. Unfortunate side effect of having to make some bread. Alright, so we're done with the... Uh, 
rise process and now we've you know we already proofed it and when I say proof basically all I'm saying is you take after about two hours of it rising when it's doubled in size you take it out of the bowl kind of move it around a little bit shape it better and then put it back in the bowl to sit for about another hour or so uh, when I say shape it better I mean like you can stretch them knead it again if you really want to but I just basically kind of flatten it out and tuck it under so it looks like a better uh, better loaf and you'll see what I'm talking about when I take the the cover off so now after an hour of proofing hour and a half depends on you know about an hour and a half you want to make sure you take your Dutch oven here and preheat it. So you want to put it in the oven, preheat the oven about 450 degrees. And let it sit in there for about 20 minutes. Because you want to get your cast iron nice and hot. Now this is an enameled cast iron because I, I, I use it quite often. So I, I invested in the enameled version. It's only about $70 from Lodge. It's pretty good. And uh, so all we're going to do is we're going to take our dough out, put it on here, sprinkle a little bit of flour in the bottom of the cast iron um, Dutch oven, put it in there and try not to burn ourselves so that way we can go ahead and bake it. And we're going to bake it for about half an hour, about 450. You're going to know when it's done when you take off the lid and thump it and it sounds hollow. What I like to do personally is I like to put it in there for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then at the last 10 minutes I'll pull the lid off. That way you can kind of let some of that out and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So. Let's go ahead and do it. We're gonna take our lid off. Oh yeah, nice and warm. A little bit of flour. You see our dough has rised amazingly. Nice and round, amazing. This is where your bread comes in. Now, before you put it in there, you're gonna to want to score the top. I just take a paring knife, a really sharp one, and score the top three times, just kind of let it vent a little bit. So, this is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on top as I do this. So. All right, we got three score marks in the top. Now, let's go ahead and put it in the Dutch oven and call it a day. All right, didn't burn myself today, we're good. Now, again, this is gonna be a 30 minutes, uh, 20 minutes with the lid on, about 10 minutes with the lid off, and uh, that thumping sound, uh, if it's hollow, you're done. Sometimes you should take 30, 35 minutes, just kind of watch it at 450. And again, like the last video, this is pretty boring, so I'm not going to show you all the weird stuff. So when it's done, I'll come back, okay? All right, there she is. She's done. Sounds good. All right. So that was making bread from scratch in a Dutch oven. Now, if you don't have a Dutch oven, don't worry. You can always just use a bread pan, but if you're going to use a bread pan, you're going to want to cut it into two loaves. So make sure you got two bread pans and do it that way. You know, cooking time is going to vary, but it's all right. You know, just play with it. It's bread. It ain't like you got to use some sort of, you know, amazing chemistry skills to figure out if it's done or not. Hey, does it look done? Okay, then you're good. So I'm not going to go into, you know, why bread is so important. You know, we've been eating bread for thousands of years you know prior to roman times uh, grain have always been used to and actually way back when bread was the main dish a lot of people would eat so if it was you know bread wasn't around then they were actually kind of worried about what they're going to eat you know with vegetables or whatnot so you can use this bread to make croutons you know stale it up a little bit and i'm going to make some french toast with it because this bread right here makes amazing french toast try it sandwich bread eh. Not so great because it doesn't want to hold together like you know your normal sandwich bread that you can buy from the store. But when it comes to French toast, out the park. I mean, you got to try this just to make the the French toast. My stomach is growling thinking about it. So with that being said, if you learned something today, go ahead and give me a like. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more content ranging from financial to cooking to just general preparedness, and I would love to have you uh, come along and you know for the ride. So with that being said, I will catch y'all later. Okay.